Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the Celtic braided throw. This throw uses a very special technique to crochet cables that I developed over the last several years and I'm really really excited to share this with you. I've also been listening to you. Oftentimes many of you crocheters want your throws to be larger than the specifics and so I have gone ahead and I've made this a larger throw for you. It is approximately 54 inches wide by 63 inches long. You're going to need about 23 balls of the recommended paint box Simply Air and Yarn. And I'm going to show that to you right now. But let's go ahead and get ready. project I'm going to be using paint box yarns simply Aaron and this is a 100 gram skein with 3.5 ounces 184 meters or approximately 201 yards this is a number four or a medium or worsted weight yarn and if you're interested in the color I'm using the color is number 208 with love crafts and there is a link in the video description should you want to obtain this particular yarn. And I will say that they often have wonderful sales if you're looking for this. And the number of balls that I will be using will be listed right across the bottom of your screen as well as in the video description. I'm also recommending that you have a size J or 10 or 6.00 millimeter crochet hook. And if you're interested in the type of hooks that I use, I also have a link in the video description below. And as always, I'm recommending that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. And be sure to chain loosely, not too loosely, but you don't want this starting chain to be really, really tight. If you tend to crochet very tight starting chains, you may want to consider bumping your hook up to one size, but then remembering to come back down to the gauge hook for the rest of the project. Okay, the starting chain is going to be 215. Now, if you have trouble remembering or counting that high, what you can do is use stitch markers to mark different increments of your choice, such as increments of 50, or 25 or even 100. So in case you get distracted or someone interrupts you, you at least have a reference point. You can go back to that particular number. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to make that starting chain of 215 chains. Now that I have my 215 chains, I must say that it's it's pretty important that you have that exact number going forward so that you don't have to experience ripping out when we start to establish the cabling section. All right, so now we're gonna start row one by working a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna work in the side of the chain or one of the Vs, that's the V on this side of the chain as you as you look at the structure of the chain. You may work in the back bump if you prefer. We will not be working a perimeter round, so however you work this row at this point, this is the way the throw will remain. All right, so we're going to start in that fourth chain from the hook by working a double crochet, and we're going to work a double crochet in each of the remaining chains all the way across, and you should have a total of 212 double crochets at the end of this row. That does not include the starting chain. I just want to be very clear about that. 
To begin row two, we're going to turn, chain two. We're not going to work in the first stitch, but in the next stitch, we're going to begin the ribbing. And that's where we work front post double crochets. If you've never worked one of those, you wrap the hook, insert the hook around the body of the stitch, and then complete the double crochet as normal. For the back post, which is the next stitch, we're going to wrap the hook and we come in through the back side, wrap the hook, you can see it going around the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and complete the double crochet. So we're going to alternate between front post double crochet and back post double crochet all the way across the row and I'll show you how this row ends. Row two ends with a front post double crochet and then we're going to work a half double crochet into the turning chain. And so this is what you should have after two rows. Now for row three, we're going to turn, chain two, skip that first stitch, and instead of a front post, we're going to begin this row with a back post double crochet, followed by a front post double crochet, back post, and then a front post double crochet. Now as you work the ribbing stitch, make sure that you work back post when it's the stitches in the back, work a front post when the stitches in the front so that you maintain the ribbed effect. Okay, so row three is going to end the same way as row two, except the last stitch you're going to be working will be a back post double crochet and then you follow that with a half double. So go ahead and work rows three through nine, which is the ribbing, and the odd number rows will begin with a back post, just like row three, and the even number rows will begin and end with a front post double crochet. So as long as you follow what the ribbing is doing, you'll know what to do. This is what you should have after completing nine rows of the ribbing. Now we're ready to begin the cabling rows with row 10 as the first row. I'm going to start with a chain two. Now the first 10 stitches are going to look very much like what we've been doing since we're going to skip that first stitch and we're going to work the first 10 stitches as ribbing beginning with a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. This is what you should have after completing those first 10 stitches and this is what you're going to do for the beginning and the ending of every row. We're just going to work the ribbing continuing with it whether it's um, if it's a front side facing like it is here you'll start with a front post and on the odd numbered rows you'll start with a back post and again work over 10 stitches with the ribbing. Now we're going to begin the cabling portion and the next stitch which is right here be careful that you don't double dip on some of these stitches otherwise your stitch count will become off. Alright so we're going to start with a wattle stitch and I use these for spacing and a wattle stitch is simply a single crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet worked in the same space. Then we're going to skip two stitches. This is customary for the beginning row of the wattle stitch. But we're only going to work one of these. So after that wattle stitch, don't forget to skip the next two stitches for the wattle stitch. Now we're going to skip two more stitches. One two so that we can begin the foundation for the small honeycomb. We're going to work a front post treble crochet. Actually we're going to work 
two of these. One, two. Now working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the last two stitches we skipped, which are first this stitch and then that stitch. And that's not too terrible. You come into the hole behind and work that first front post treble and then do that again, coming into that same space. And I am using the nerve endings in my thumb and my um, finger to locate these stitches. I know this looks very different, it is, but once you do this a few times, it does make a lot more sense. Okay, now we're gonna skip the next two stitches, one, two, and we're gonna front post treble in the next two stitches. Now working in front of these two stitches, which is a little more straightforward, we're gonna front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And that is the foundation for the first of many honeycombs that we're going to be making. This is the small version of the honeycomb and you see how this V is formed with the trebles. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is another wattle stitch, which is in the next stitch, single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. After we do that, we skip two stitches for the wattle stitch to, to lay down like that. And then we're going to work the foundation for the elongated cable, which is sometimes long and sometimes short in this design. So we're going to work three front post double crochets, a half double worked into the top loops of that next stitch. And then three more front post double crochets. Let's do that one again. Okay. After those seven stitches for that elongated cable, we're going to work another waddle stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet skip two stitches. Now we're going to work the foundation for another small honeycomb. Skip the next two stitches, front post, treble in the next two stitches. Now working behind these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the last two stitches. We skipped this stitch and then this stitch. Again, coming into that hole and using my fingers to find the right stitch. Skip the next two stitches. Now make sure these are stitches you have not used yet. One, two, front post, treble in the next two stitches and working in front of these two stitches post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. So let's pull back and take a look at this. We have the ribbing over here, wattle stitch, the small honeycomb, wattle stitch, the seven stitch foundation for the elongated cable, wattle stitch, and the beginning of the small honeycomb. Now we're going to work another wattle stitch in that next stitch. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, for that wattle stitch. Now we're going to work the foundation for the big braided cable. Okay, so we're going to work front post double crochets in the next five stitches. OK, 
Okay. After that, we're going to work a half double crochet worked into the top loops of the next stitch. And then five more front post double crochets. You only use the trebles when crossing these cables and we haven't got, yes, we have gotten to that on the the um, small honeycombs right back here. So we're crossing cables and that's when we use the the front post treble crochets. Otherwise, we're gonna be using front post double crochets. After those five front post doubles, we work another half double. And then now we work five more front post double crochets. Okay. Now we have done all the foundations uh, that we're going to work across this row, or at least one set of them. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this with you, but let me explain. We're going to go back here and we're going to repeat the waddle stitch, which is right after the ribbing, the waddle stitch. We're going to do the, another, another foundation for the small honeycomb, a waddle stitch, the seven stitch foundation for the elongated cable, a waddle stitch, and then another honeycomb, small honeycomb, waddle stitch, and then the foundation for yet another of the large braided cable. Okay, so we're going to repeat this two times. Okay, so we're gonna repeat from this section all the way through the 17 stitch large braided cable foundation. We're gonna repeat that two more times, but I'll go ahead and work this with you because this is rather complicated, but once you get this set up properly, it will be so much easier. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is that waddle stitch. Just remember there's a waddle stitch in between each of these cables. And that's just a signal as you crochet across that something is going to change. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do now repeating this is the honeycomb. Okay. Skip two stitches for the waddle stitch and then two more stitches for the first part of that honeycomb. Front post treble and the next two stitches. Remember working behind those two stitches. We're going to front post treble in this stitch and then in this stitch. It's a little bit awkward at first if you've never done this stitch, but once you get used to it and your muscle memory gets a little bit of time with it, it makes a lot more sense and it doesn't feel as strange. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, front post treble, and the two stitches that we just skipped. All right, give me some more yarn here. And waddle stitch, and the next stitch. Again, that waddle stitch is a single crochet, chain one, double crochet. After that, we're going to work the foundation for that um, elongated cable. Skip two stitches for the waddle stitch and then we're going to work three front post doubles, a half double in the next stitch, and then three more front post double crochets. After that, we're going to work another waddle stitch. And followed by yet another small honeycomb. Skip two stitches for the waddle stitch and two more stitches for the small honeycomb. Front 
front post treble in those first two stitches. And working behind those two stitches, front post treble in the two skipped stitches, the last two skipped stitches that is. Skip two more stitches, one, two, and front post treble, and the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, front post treble in the two stitches that were skipped. Oops, make sure I have the right one. Yes, I do. I will say that this does get easier once you get into, once you establish the foundation, you're not working in ribbing at that point and it does get easier. All right, so now we're going to work a waddle stitch in that next stitch and it's time for another 17 stitch foundation for the braided cable. Skip the next two stitches and then we're going to front post double crochet in the next five stitches. Half double in that next stitch. Front post double crochet in the next five stitches. Let's make sure I have there we go. I had that right. I just wanted to make sure. Two, three, four, and five. Half double in that next stitch. And then front post, double crochet in the next five stitches. Let's try that one again. Okay, as we do that, it's time to do a quick check to make sure we did this correctly. So here is the last, or the um, 17 stitch braided cable foundation from the first one that we worked. Waddle stitch, small honeycomb, waddle stitch, elongated cable, waddle stitch, honeycomb, waddle stitch, and then the 17 stitch big braided cable foundation. Now it's time for us to do that again. Waddle stitch. And I'll go ahead and work, work this with you one more time. We're going to do the foundation for the honeycomb. Skip two for the waddle stitch and then two more for that large honeycomb, two front post treble crochets, working behind these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two last two stitches that we skipped, skip two more stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, and then we are doing it again. Waddle stitch the next stitch. Skip two stitches for that waddle stitch. Three front post double crochets. This is for the elongated cable foundation. Half double in that next stitch. And then three more front post double crochets. 
All right. And it's time for a wattle stitch in the next stitch. And it's time for another small honeycomb foundation. Skip two stitches for the wattle stitch and then two more for that honeycomb. Two front post treble crochets. Remember trebles when we're crossing, working behind those two stitches. We're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Let's try that again. Make sure we have two, yes, that we skipped. And skip the next two stitches and then front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And again, another wattle stitch. Now it's time for another braided cable. I just want to check to make sure I've done that properly. Yes, I did. Skip the next two stitches. Front post double crochet in each of the next five stitches. half double, that next half double, front post, double crochet in each of the next five stitches, half double, that next stitch, Front post double in each of the next five stitches. Okay. So now for the last repeat, we are just going to work the stitching for another wattle stitch, a small honeycomb wattle stitch that seven stitch elongated cable foundation, a wattle stitch and another honeycomb and the wattle stitch. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll work the ribbing. So now we're ready to work that. We're going to work a wattle stitch. This is following that 17 stitch big braided cable foundation. We're going to go wattle stitch. Now we're going to skip two stitches for the wattle stitch and then two more for the small honeycomb. And then we work behind those two stitches. We front post treble in those last two stitches that we skipped. Skip two more stitches and then front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, we front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. It's already getting a bit chunky in here with all this length of this um, throw. All right, so now we work a wattle stitch after that. After that, we're going to work the stitch for that elongated cable. We skip the next two stitches, and then we work three front post double crochets, a half double, 
and then three more front post double crochets and after that we work another waddle stitch and now we skip two stitches for the waddle stitch two more for the small honeycomb front post treble and those next two stitches And working behind those two stitches, we're going to front post treble in those two stitches that we skipped. All right, working the next two stitches, we skip these two and then front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, we front post treble in the two stitches that were skipped. All right, next thing we do is a waddle stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. After that, we are going to skip two stitches, one, two, and starting with the back post, we're going to work the ribbing or front post, back post. So back post, front post, back post, front post. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten yay i love it when the numbers work out on the first try the the last thing we do is work a half double crochet worked into that turning chain and that completes our foundation row if you're still with me after this i think you can do this this is probably the trickiest row of all I'm going to go ahead and um, from this point on, I'm not going to make, you know, 15 minute rows. I will work the stitches with you since they're already established and you will just simply repeat what I do across the row. And if you have any questions, you can always refer to the written pattern, which I highly encourage you to check out. The link will be in the video description below. All right, so now let's go on to row number 11, and this is with the back side facing. This is going to be much simpler, I hope. Chain two, skip that first stitch. You will always skip that first stitch when you begin the ribbing, and then work the ribbing in the first 10 rows. This time with the back side facing, it begins with the back post double crochet, followed by a front post double. So go ahead and repeat that over the first 10 stitches. After completing those first 10 stitches with the ribbing, we come to our first waddle stitch. And when you work in a waddle stitch, you work in that chain one space. And we simply work a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. When you're working over the cables, we're just working back post double crochets. So for the honeycombs, that's going to mean eight back post double crochets. I'm, I'll work the first example with you. So make sure that you have a total of eight back post doubles when you work over the small honeycomb cables. After that, another honey, I'm sorry, another waddle stitch, and you know what to do. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet, worked into that chain one space. Now we come across that seven stitch elongated cable foundation, and we're gonna work three back post 
double crochets. A half double in that next half double again worked into the top loops and then three back post double crochets and you can see what I mean visually these foundation is already established so there's not as much thinking involved but you still have to pay a bit of attention waddle stitch single crochet chain one double crochet another small honeycomb we're going to work eight back post double crochets Another waddle stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet, and make sure that you work that in the chain one space. And as you're working across the foundation for the big braided cable, we're going to work five, I can actually just tell you, five back post double crochets. Let's go ahead and do five, four, and five. And when you get to the half doubles, you work into the top loops, work a half double. Okay. Five back post doubles, half double, five back post doubles, and then you get to the waddle stitch again, and then you're repeating what I have already demonstrated. So go ahead and work that with the back side facing all the way across row 11. So this is what you should have after completing 11 rows. And just working that last row, you can see that it's giving a little more shape to what we're doing. Okay, etc. Well, let's go ahead and start row number 12. And again, I'm just going to work about a third of this because the rest will be repeating what I show you in this section. Okay, we're going to chain two. And we're going to work those first 10 stitches, again, skipping the first stitch. And we're going to do front post and back post over the next 10 stitches. Okay, after working those 10 stitches, and that last of that 10 stitches is a back post. Double crochet. Now we're going to work another waddle stitch in that chain one space. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now we come to the honeycombs and what I show you here, you're going to do um, with each of the honeycombs in this row. We're going to close in the tops by, by making it look like this. One thing that we did when working on the foundation row was skipping two stitches with these waddle stitches. Notice that we're not doing that. Uh, we are only working in the chain one space. All right, so with the cabling, we're going to skip the first two post stitches, front post, treble, in each of the next two stitches, working in front of those last two stitches, we front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Skip the next two stitches, front post, treble, in the next two stitches. Now working behind those last two stitches, we're going to come in and front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Let me screw that again, come in to the hole there, and we're going to use that stitch. And then we work a waddle stitch in that next chain one space of the waddle stitch. All right, let me pause a second and let's take a look at what we've done here with the honeycombs. 
um, the honeycomb is going to be a four row repeat. Row one of the honeycomb is going to look like this. Row two is with the back side facing will be just those eight back post double crochets. And then row three of the honeycomb will look like this. So notice that what we did here, we're doing here now and also vice versa. What we did here on row one, we're doing it on this side. So we're just reversing that and that gives us this nice little shape of a honeycomb. All right, so let's keep going. Now we've come to the seven stitch foundation of the elongated cable and we're going to start with a smaller cable. So what we're going to do, we're going to skip the first three stitches. We are going to just cross these cables, skip those first three stitches, half double in that half double crochet. We're going to front post treble in the next three stitches. Go ahead and pull them all the way through. Okay, so we're crossing the cable, so we're using trebles. Now working in front of those last four stitches, that would be the three trebles and the half double, we're gonna front post treble in this stitch, this stitch, and then this stitch. Now there is a lot going on, just I understand if you've never seen these before, I am going to have some stitch references, a stitch videos that you can watch that are is additional to this video in the video description below should you have need of those. Um, that might be helpful to be familiar with these stitches before we try to, you know, try to do all of them together. But anyway, um, let's go ahead on to the next thing. So we've crossed these cables here. Now we're on to the next waddle stitch. Again, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And now we are back to another honeycomb and we're gonna do it exactly as we completed this honeycomb, but I'll do this with you. Skip the next two post stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches working in front of these stitches. And if you're ever confused about whether to work in front or to work in back, just give it a quick visual check. You know these are gonna go out and then they're gonna come and close at the top. And we're, we're, it's just gonna do that continually all the way um, throughout this project. So again, that way you don't have to stay married to the pattern you can just check visually to see that you've completed it correctly. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, working behind those stitches, come into the back door there, and work front post trebles. Remember, use those nerve endings in your tall man and thumpkin and that will help you to find where these stitches are located. Okay, now we have another waddle stitch worked into that chain one space. And now we come to our braided cable and we're gonna go ahead and start crossing this. And the way we do this is we're gonna skip five stitches and we're going to half double in that next space. That is a big gap. Don't worry about it. We're going to take care of this. Then we're going to front post treble in each of the next five stitches. After working those five, we're going to go back and we're going to work front post trebles in each of these five stitches. 
Yes, it does feel like a stretch. It is. But once you get the hang of this, I think you're going to enjoy this. And make sure that you do five of these stitches. These are front post trebles. Okay. And then half double in the next half double. So that's a lot of material crossed there. And it's going to take a few, several rows for it to really look the way it should. But I think you're going to really enjoy this one. And then front post treble and the next five stitches. Okay, so let's pause and take a look. So this is our braided cable. Yeah, it doesn't look like a braid at the moment, but given several more rows, it will. All right, so that is, for the most part, what you are going to be repeating. So we're going to do that, the um, honeycomb, the waddle stitches in between, of course, the seven stitch. This is the elongated cable, honeycomb, and the big braided cable. And so again, we're going to do the honeycomb, the elongated stitch crossing this on this row, the honeycomb, and then another big braided cable just like I showed you. And then again, we do another honeycomb, the seven stitch cable that we cross, of course, with the waddle stitches in between, and another honeycomb, and then another big braided cable just like I showed you and then we're going to do it again we're going to do the waddle stitch the um, honeycomb and crossing the seven stitch elongated cable and then a honeycomb waddle stitch and then we're going to do the 10 stitches and it's going to start on a back post double crochet so don't leave that stitch out if you do you're going to be dropping a stitch and you don't want to do that so make sure you start with the back post double crochet front post, back post, front post on those last 10 stitches and then a half double crochet in the turning chain. So go ahead and finish this and if you need, you can just look at the, um, go back to where row one begins. I'm, I'm sorry, this is row number 12. Go back to where row 12 begins if you need to look at this again. This is what you should have after 12 completed rows and I'm going from right to left. And you can see the honeycomb. This is a really good practice at the end of each row, especially with the front side facing, that you do a quick visual check. Make sure that you've crossed the cables correctly. And this is the crossing of that elongated cable. Another honeycomb. And this is the big braid. And then we're going to do that again. Check to make sure I cross the honeycomb. The elongated, the honeycomb. Another big braid. Honeycomb elongated honeycomb, the big braid, and a honeycomb, elongated, and a honeycomb. All right, so now we're ready to go on to the next row. So row 13 begins just like the other rows with the chain two, and the back side is facing now. And go ahead and work those first 10 ribbing stitches with the back post and the front post, back post, front post. Okay, after those ribbing post stitches, we work the first waddle stitch. And just like we did two rows previously, we're going to work eight back post double crochets over the back side of this honeycomb cable. So go ahead and work those eight back post double crochets. After those eight back post double crochets, we have another waddle stitch. Worked in that chain one space. Now where I'm going to show you this time is a little bit different. So it is a new skill and this is the row that you work after you've crossed this seven stitch elongated cable. We're going to work three back post double crochets 
And we're, we're going to do something similar with the large braided cable as well. So we work three back post double crochets. Now we have no place to work that half double, so we're going to work it in between that last stitch and next stitch. And you can see my finger coming through here. This is where those cables are crossed. So just stick that hook right in between those two stitches and we form our half double crochet. The stitch count does remain the same throughout on these rows, just to let you know, um, because we are skipping a half double crochet here in just a minute and we've added one in, so mathematically they do cancel out. Now we're gonna work three more back post double crochets. So that's the main thing to remember when you are working the row after you've crossed cables is if you have that seven stitch cable and this is also going to apply to the large braided cable, we're going to work half double crochets in between where those cables were crossed. All right, so now we have a another waddle stitch. I um, have to be careful to work around this place where I joined another ball of yarn and another eight back post double crochets over this next honeycomb. So go ahead and work those eight back post double crochets after those, that next set of eight back post double crochets, a waddle stitch. You should have the hang of these now because we're going to be working a lot of these in between all the various cables. Okay, so now we are working back post double crochets on the back side of this large braided cable. Remember we have groups of five back posts. I'm just gonna work this whole thing with you the first time. So that's four and five. We do have a half double there, so go ahead and work in the top loops of that half double. And then now we have five more and they're back on the side on the back side facing against us here, since we have the back side facing. So the, just the next five stitches that appear, we're not crossing anything as we work these back post double crochets. But do make sure that you count five. So that's three, four, and five. And then we're the, the last stitch and the next stitch we're crossed, go ahead and put a half double right there. And then you have five more stitches. You may have to search for these because they are hidden behind that last group of five. That's three, four, and five. Okay. So we have completed that. The next thing is another waddle stitch and it begins all over again. So I've shown you how to work behind all these various cables. So now you're just going to repeat that across the row. Again, eight back post doubles, the waddle stitch, and then you have the next three back post doubles, half double, in between that last stitch and next stitch, which is the center of the cable, and then three more back post doubles, waddle stitch, etc. So go ahead and complete row 13. This is how the cabling section should look after 13 completed rows. Okay, again, do a quick visual check just to make sure that everything is looking good. Now we're going to start row 14 and before we do, I just want to tell you briefly what we're going to do because this is an easier row. Now, as I said before, with the honeycomb cables, you have row one, row two, row three, row four, and the honeycomb cables throughout are just going to be repeating that over and over again. Row one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is the only thing that we're going to cross in this row. We're going to work row one again, which looks like this on the honeycombs. Everything else, we're just going to be adding front post double crochets and the half doubles in the appropriate places. And of course, the waddle stitches as usual. That goes without saying. But even when we get to the large 
cable, the braided cable. We're just going to work front post double crochets over those post stitches and the half doubles. Don't forget those where appropriate. I'm going to work, you know, with you through the first um, covering of the set of cables. So we're going to go ahead, chain two. Again, this is for row 14. And first thing, skip that first stitch and then work those first 10 front and back post stitches for the side ribbing. After those 10 ribbing stitches, we work that wattle stitch. And then we get to the honeycomb and we're going to work a repeat of row one. So we skip the first two stitches front post treble, the next two stitches, working behind those two stitches, we're going to front post treble in those two stitches that we just skipped. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, and front post treble in the next two stitches. And working in front of those two stitches, we front post treble in the two skipped stitches. And then waddle stitch in that next stitch. I am moving a little on the fast side. I apologize if that's frustrating to you. If you're watching this on a YouTube platform, you can slow that down. I do have a video on my channel that explains that. Um, it's rather simple. There's a little gear shaped icon down across the bottom. If you click that, it brings up the playback speed. Again, this is only on YouTube platform. Um, on your cell phones, there's a little three vertical dots. If you click on that, it also brings back the playback speed and that will help you to control the playback speed of any of the videos on the YouTube platform. Okay. Now we get to that seven stitch elongated cable. We work three front post double crochets, a half double and that next half double, and then three more front post double crochets. Okay. So you can see this cable, this, this cable is going to grow to about this this large before we cross it again. And whenever we cross this cable, it's always going to be the front cross, just like we did a couple of rows or a few rows back. Okay, ha, uh, waddle stitch that next space. And another honeycomb, skip two. I'll go ahead and complete this because you've already seen this a few times. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and work. Well, I'll go ahead and finish it with you. Working behind those last two stitches. Go ahead and front post treble. And those two skip stitches. Skip the next two stitches. Front post treble. In the next two stitches. and working in front this time, front post treble in the two skipped stitches. And again, always do a quick visual check to make sure that they are going in the proper direction. Waddle stitch in that next chain one space of the waddle stitch, the last row. And now we're going to work those front post double crochets on the large braided cable. All right, so we're going to work. Remember, there are five of these. That's three, four, and five. Now we do have that half double. 
and then five more. A half double. And then five more front front post double crochets. Okay, and so that is what you're going to be repeating across the row. All right, so go ahead and complete row 14. These are the cables after completing 14 rows. Now for row 15, it's going to look very similar to a row that we've already worked because we're going to primarily work back post double crochets over all the cables. The only exception is we are going to cross the braided cable with the back side facing us. So let me explain this. This is going to be kind of uh, in reverse, so you're going to have to use your imagination. I will show this as I go across the row. When we come the other direction, we're going to, okay, this is with the back side facing, but I just want to show you here. We're going to skip the first five stitches. We're going to work a half double crochet in the half double. Then we're going to back post treble over these five stitches. And then working in front of those five stitches, we're going to back post treble over these five stitches. And then we're going to work a half double crochet. Then we're going to back post treble over these last five stitches. And you will start to see the braided cable forming finally. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this row started. Okay, for row 15 chain two and go ahead skip that first stitch and work those 10 ribbing stitches starting with a back post and then a front post we come to the first waddle stitch and you know what to do single crochet chain one double crochet we come to that honeycomb again and we work those eight back post double crochet. So go ahead and work those eight back posts across that cable. After working those eight stitches over that honeycomb cable, we have another waddle stitch. And now we have the elongated cable. So we work the next three back post double crochets. After we do that, work a half double and then three more back post double crochets. A waddle stitch. And then four more back post double crochets. So I'll go ahead and work these Actually, it's eight, eight more back post doubles. I'll go ahead and work those. So I just completed those eight back post double crochets, another waddle stitch. And now for the somewhat challenging part, it's not that difficult. Remember what I, I talked about? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna skip the next five stitches, half double, in that next half double. Now we're going to work five back post trebles in each of the next stitches. And this is that patch or that five stitch grouping that's on top um, with that face front side facing. So we're gonna work five back post treble crochets. I know this is odd. This is the only time in my particular stitches that I'm crossing cables with the back side facing. But for this large of a cable, 
and for this braid it really works well. Okay, make sure I have five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now we're going to cross in front of those last six stitches. That's the five post cables and that half double. And we're going to work in front as seen from the front side. So we're going to cross all the way to that first stitch like this. So if it's facing you, it's going to be on the back all the way right back here. This is the first of that five grouping that we skipped. Remember that I showed you with the front side facing? So that's one. And do take this kind of slowly so that you don't get confused. That's one. And two. And three. Need to get some more yarn. And the next one is right there. Four. And the next one. Five. Okay. And then we're going to find our next half double crochet, which is way over here. It feels like it's across the room because this is such a wide cable. And then we have five more back post double crochets in those next five post stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. So that is the repeat across. So let me show you what this looks like with the front side facing. So you can see our braid is starting to finally take shape. And the more rows you complete on this, it's going to look really nice because it's more than twice the width of any of the other cables. So it's designed to really draw attention to itself more than the others in this particular design. Okay. So that's what you're going to do across the row over those cables. So go ahead and complete that. And I'll show you the next row once we're finished with that. This is what you should have after completing 15 rows. Okay, that's what the cabling should look like. And again, be careful that you're doing a visual check at the end of each row before you go on to the next. Now we're going to start row 16. And as usual, we start with a chain two and skip the first stitch and work front post, back post over that, over the next 10 stitches for the ribbing. Once you've done that, we work that waddle stitch in the chain one space. Now we're ready to work row three of the honeycomb. And this is where we close in the tops just like we did here. All right, so we skip the first two stitches, front post treble, and the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, we front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. There we go. Skip the next two stitches and front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind those last two stitches, we come in and work front post trebles in the two stitches that we skipped. And again, a waddle stitch in that chain one space. Now for the other cables, for the seven stitch elongated cable, we're just going to work front post double crochets over all of the cables that are like this. And 
and then we have the half double in between and then three more front post double crochet and then again we have a waddle stitch and we have the the um, front post travels just like we did over the honeycomb so I'm going to go ahead and work that and the waddle stitch and then I'll show you what to do with the large braided cable. Now that we're working over the big braid we're going to go ahead and work one front post double crochet in each of the next five stitches Okay, we have a half double crochet, so we're going to work a half double crochet in the top of those half double crochet, and then one double crochet, I'm sorry, front post double crochet in each of the next five stitches. We're just working straight across this large braided cable. Okay, make sure that we have five of those, and we do. And now in between that last stitch and the next stitch, and the next stitches are kind of hiding behind here, so you're going to have to look for these. Work a half double crochet in between that last stitch and next stitch, and again, this is where the cable has crossed. And then, make sure you get that first stitch. We work five front post double crochets across this section, the last section of the braid, which is kind of kind of hiding back behind this section. Okay, and we did add another stitch in here, but there's another half double crochet there that we are going to skip. So that keeps our stitch count the same. And then we just continue with a waddle stitch and repeating what I showed you over the rest of the throw. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way across. This is what you should have after 16 completed rows. Okay, now we're going to turn to work row 17, and I am just going to explain this one instead of demonstrating. We're going to chain two. Skip that first stitch, and then we work the 10, starting with the back post, back post, front post, back post, front post, etc. for those first 10 stitches. Waddle stitch. We're going to work back post double crochets over the honeycomb stitches. Again, the waddle stitch. And then back post over the 7 stitch elongated cable. It would be 3 back post double crochets, half double, 3 back post double crochets. And again, you have your honeycomb. You work eight back post double crochets over that. When you come to the braided cable, we're going to work five back post double crochets, half double and a half double, five back post double crochets, half double, and five more back post double crochets. And again, waddle stitches where those appear. And then, then of course, the ribbing at the end. So go ahead and work that across across row 17. This is what you should have after completing 17 rows. And you can see the cabling being defined a little better. Now we're going to start row 18. And I'm going to work some of this with you. But let me go ahead and have you start the ribbing chain 2. Starting with the front post, work those 10 front post, back post, front post, back post, and then work the waddle stitch. And then um, we're going to work row one of the honeycomb, which is the row that opens up like this. We're going to do that here. We're going to work a waddle stitch. And then I'll show you the crossing of this cable. So go ahead and work to the waddle stitch next to the elongated cable and I'll show this crossing for you one more time. Once you get to the elongated cable it's time to cross the cable. We're going to skip the first three stitches. We're going to half double 
crochet in that half double crochet in the center, front post treble crochet in the next three stitches, working in front of the last four stitches, that's the three post stitches and the half double crochet, front post treble in those three stitches that we just skipped. And then we're going to continue with the bottle stitch. And let me go ahead and I'll work this honeycomb. I'm going to work the eight stitches over that and then I'm going to show you what to do with the braided cable. So after completing that wattle stitch, those eight stitches with the honeycomb cable and another wattle stitch, it's time to cross the cables on the big braid. Now these are crossed after every three rows. Okay, so you're going to have two rows where you have the we're going to have a row of, with the front post and a row at the back post, and then it's time to cross them again. So I'm going to do it from the front side and show you how this looks so that you get an idea as you go forward how this is going to look. We're going to skip the next five stitches, half double, in that half double crochet, front post treble in the next five stitches, Working in front of these five stitches and the half double crochet, I'm going to come all the way over here and front post treble in those five stitches that we just skipped. Yes, it is a reach. And again, I'm doing front post treble crochets. see these are crossing under and these are on top and then we half double in the next half double crochet and then front post trebles in the next five stitches this is the last um, section of this big braid Okay, and so there you have it on the braid. So go ahead and work this all the way across. Again, we're crossing the braided cables and we're crossing the elongated cables. And of course, we continue to cross those honeycombs every time we are with the front side facing. This is what your cables should look like after completing 18 rows and you can see a much better defined big braid and you see that we have crossed the elongated cable. All right, so let's go ahead and turn and I'm going to explain what you need to do for row 19 since it's so similar to what we've already done. We chain two, skip the first stitch and we begin with a back post double crochet on the ribbing at the beginning of this side and we work back post front post over those 10 stitches waddle stitch here eight back post double crochets waddle stitch now when you get to the elongated cables you're going to work three back post double crochets a half double in between the last stitch and the next stitch that's the center of the cable and then three more back post double crochets 
we're going to work another waddle stitch and again eight back post double crochets a waddle stitch and working on the back side of this large braid five back post double crochets half double and the half double five more back post double crochets half double in between that last stitch and next stitch that's where the cables cross there and then five more back post double crochets and again waddle stitch and then it begins all over again so go ahead and work row 19. this is what we have after completing 19 rows all right so now we're going to work row 20 and let me go ahead and just give you some verbal instructions before I do the one thing that's a little bit different. It's chain two, and again, we do the ribbing over those 10 stitches. We skip that first stitch, start with a front post, then a back post, double crochet, front post, double crochet, etc. Waddle stitch. This is the time to work row number three of the honeycomb, which is closing in the top, just like we did here and that's working a front cross and then a back cross. A waddle stitch, and I'm gonna work this part with you. So go ahead and work to this point, and then I'm gonna work this with you. We're actually gonna cross this cable again, and we're gonna form a very tiny um, cable. So what we'll end up with is an elongated cable, a little knobby cable, and then an elongated cable, a little knobby cable. So, um, and then once I show you this, you'll pretty much have all of the instruction you need to complete this throw until we get to transitioning back to the ribbing that will match the bottom of our throw. So go ahead and work until you get to this waddle stitch. And then again, I will show you this cross. Once you get to the elongated cable, we're going to skip the first three stitches, half double, in that half double crochet. Then we're going to front post treble in those next three stitches. Working in front of those last four stitches, we're going to front post treble in the three stitches we skipped. This might be a little more challenging because they're not as defined as when we work these rows and just straight front and back post stitches for a while for the elongated part. So make sure that you get those three stitches. So we have it like a teeny cable here, or like a little bobbled cable. And then we continue on in the pattern stitch with that waddle stitch. And let me cover what you're going to do for the large braided cable. When you get to that, we're just going to work front post, double crochets over those five stitches, half double, five front post doubles, half double, and then five front post double crochets. All right, so go ahead and finish row 20. Okay, this is what you should have after completing 20 rows. You should have three complete honeycombs, and let's talk a little bit about these cables. In these cables, you're going to have a repeat, repeat row one. Now this is, I'm giving this a number. This is actually row 10 in the entire project. But as far as the repeating uh, directions for just the honeycomb, you have row one, row two, row three, row four, row one, row two, row three, row four. That will continue throughout this project. Okay, just repeating that, no matter what is going on anywhere else. And this is something that you can look, do a quick visual check to know exactly what you need to do, I believe, at this point, if you're still tracking with me at this point. This section, the elongated cable with a little bobble, or it's not really a bobble, it's a the big and little cable. Um, but with this, you have um, an eight-row repeat. Okay, the big braided cable is actually much more simple than it looks. This is only a six row repeat. 
you'll have a front cross, then you have two rows, and then you'll have a back cross, two rows, a front cross, etc. So this is the one cable where it will cross in the front row, and then three rows later it'll cross with, or rather with the front side facing, and then three rows later it'll cross with the back side facing, just continually throughout. And that is, that is all the cables. So even though I, I think this looks beautifully complex, when you simplify it to just a section, it really isn't. You're really only dealing with three different cables throughout. And again, as I recommend, do a visual check at the end of each row, especially when you are crossing cables, which is just about every other row. So if you just take 30 seconds and just make sure that you did what you were supposed to do, um, then that will save you a lot of ripping out. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this um, for the specific number of repeats as, as seen across the bottom of the screen. And then I'll return to show you how to return to working the ribbing to match the other end of this throw. Um, so for row 128, we are going to return to the ribbing. And you should know how to do that at this point, but I'm going to go ahead and work these first 10 stitches like we've been doing. And then I'll show you how to work these over the other stitches. So working in these other stitches, we come to the first waddle stitch. We're going to skip the double crochet. We're going to work two double crochets in the chain one space and one in the single crochet and we're going to do this over each of the waddle stitches um, for the the honeycomb and the other cables we're going to just work front post double crochets So we'll just work eight front post double crochets. And I should also state that if you want to make your throw longer than what I have, I'll put the um, dimensions right across the bottom there so that you know the final dimensions of what we're working on as a reminder. Um, you know, feel free to just continue the pattern stitch before returning to the ribbing. It's really as simple as that and it kind of puts you in charge of how, how big or how small you want this to be. Okay, we come to a waddle stitch, we skip the double crochet, we work two double crochets in that chain one space and one in the single crochet. Coming to the elongated cable, we're going to work three front post double crochets. You can go ahead and work a half double in that half double just to maintain the height. And when we, you know, come and work across with the ribbing, the front post and back post, we're going to treat that half double crochet just like you, we would a, a full size double crochet. Now continuing on. So we've done that with the elongated cable and coming to another waddle stitch again two double crochets in that chain one space and one in that single crochet and it's really important that you try to maintain your stitches in this way so that the um, front post and back post double crochets all line up with the ends you know with the sides of this project again another honeycomb work eight front post double crochets across these stitches and then again coming to a waddle stitch two double crochets in that chain one and then one in that single crochet and then the last part I'm going to show you we're just going to work five front post double crochets just like you would have over this braided cable and 
and half double crochets in the half double crochets. So go ahead and continue that all the way across the row. Now the next eight rows will be worked very much the same way as rows two through nine at the very beginning of this project. Again, skipping that first stitch, and we're just going to work back post double crochets and front post double crochets all the way across the row. And if we worked our double crochets correctly from the last row, our front and back post should line up in sequence with the stitches on the other side. So after you complete this row, which is actually row two of the ending, um, go ahead and complete rows three through nine of the ribbing and fasten off at the end of that last row and hide your loose ends. And then I'll go ahead and put some photos of this project right here and so that you can see what this looks like completed. I hope you enjoyed making the Celtic braided throw with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Always feel free to comment below. God bless. Bye-bye.